But U.S. President Joe Biden ripped the Supreme Court's decision on presidential immunity and called the Supreme Court ruling on Trump's immunity claims a dangerous precedent. Biden said in his address that the Supreme Court decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits what the president can do. Biden blamed Trump for the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol and actually said the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts about what happened then before they vote in November's election. But today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent, because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. Well, Steve Herman joins us live from Washington with the latest update. Thanks so much, Steve, for making time for us. Donald Trump has hailed the development as a big win for democracy, as Democrats claimed the ruling had handed him the keys to a dictatorship. But would you say this is a big win for Trump? What's in store for him now? This is certainly a partial win for former President Trump. He's characterizing it as a total victory, which it is not. Uh, the Supreme Court justices on a six to three vote split along ideological lines uh, decided that the presidents of the United States have limited immunity from criminal prosecution. In this particular case, what they're saying is that presidents do have total immunity, essentially, from official acts, but uh, they do not necessarily have lim uh, immunity from unofficial acts. But what precedent does the Supreme Court ruling set for future cases concerning U.S. presidents, whether future or former? Well, this is certainly a historical ruling. It, uh, we haven't had a precedent like this uh, before. Uh, it will affect uh, presidents uh, presumably forever unless the Supreme Court changes its ruling in future. What they're doing for now uh, is kicking it back to the lower courts from where this case came. This involves immunity for Donald Trump for acts that he committed after the votes were cast in the 2020 presidential election. He didn't like the outcome. He lost and he took actions essentially trying to overturn the results of that election. And a special counsel has brought charges against him for that. This case now certainly being kicked back to the lower courts will delay that. So we're unlikely to see a verdict in that before uh, this November's election. And uh, the special prosecutor, Jack Smith, is probably going to have to go back to the courts and uh, change his charging documents. And what I've read of the decision uh, so far is that um, it's going to make it a lot more difficult uh, for him uh, to take uh, official actions and try to turn them into prosecutions for what would be deemed unofficial acts. So much more challenging for the prosecution and uh, much better for Donald Trump's defense lawyers in pushing back against this. Right. But Steve, what's next for Trump and his legal counsel? If a trial before Election Day seemed difficult before the immunity ruling, is it all but impossible now? Well, uh, Trump is uh, painting this, as I said, as a total of a victory that uh, basically gives him the right now to say and do whatever he wants on the campaign trail. Well, that's not uh, going to be the case. Uh, but um, he, what he's saying is that he's basically free now between now and the election. Again, that's not true. There's another case in which he faces uh, sentencing, the so-called hush money uh, yes. trial where he was convicted on uh, several dozen uh, criminal fraud counts. The sentencing for that is coming up, I think, uh, on the 11th or so later this month. So that and that will be just days uh, before the Republican National Convention. And uh, he could uh, conceivably uh, be uh, sentenced to prison, although we don't think that's going to happen as a first time offender. But there could be restrictions placed on him uh, that could affect his campaigning.
But Steve, this particular ruling, the Supreme Court has clearly distinguished between official and unofficial acts in its ruling. In your understanding, how does this distinction play into prior cases of retention of classified documents by both presidents, Trump and Biden? Well, it's going to be for these lower courts now to decide what actions are official and, uh, and, and unofficial. So, and then we'll probably have an appeal on these uh, different charges in this case or any future case come back up to the Supreme Court for consideration. Uh, but um, what uh, one of the examples that's been given is uh, could a president now uh, carry out uh, an assassination against a, a foreign leader uh, and, and, and have absolute immunity because that's now determined to be an official act. Your imagination could run wild with different things that you think a leader of a country could do if he knew that um, he was uh, absolved of, of facing any prosecution for that in the future. 